substances like tree barks and plant roots. So why don't national health strategies fully take all this into account? To answer these and other questions, we welcome the World Health Organization's new Global Center for Traditional Medicine. A bold new vision that starts in Jamnagar, Gujarat in India, but has a truly global reach. A center to support evidence and data, sustainability, Welcome, it is 7.30 in the evening in India and we are back again with a spotlight on G20. It was the second day of the G20 Health Working Group meeting in Tiruvananthapuram. Main sessions have concluded in Kerala but events will continue on the sidelines tomorrow. The day started today for G20 delegates with morning yoga on the picturesque Kopalam beach in God's own country. There was focus on medical value tourism, value-based health care and traditional medicine too. On India at G20 today, we ask how is India promoting holistic health care as G20 president? I'm Anun Bhattacharya. First up, the top stories. G20 delegates start the second day in Tiruvananthapuram with morning yoga by the beautiful Kovalam Beach. Under India's G20 presidency, key focus is on promoting holistic health and amalgamation of traditional systems of medicine and healthcare service delivery. G20 delegates deliberate on using digital health innovations and solutions for universal health coverage and improving healthcare service delivery. WHO's Director of Digital Health and Innovation says India has demonstrated that foundational investments can enable transformation into technologically mature systems of which Aadhaar is an example. Union Minister of State for Health Dr. Bharti Praveen Pawar inaugurates a side event on medical value travel, says policy imperative to promote medical value travel needs to gain momentum, urges stakeholders to make a unique blueprint for the future of medical value travel through effective collaborations. And uh, let's uh, straight uh, go across uh, for perspective to Vedya Rajesh Kotecha. He is a Union Secretary. Ayush Ministry is joining us directly from Tiruvananthapuram, the capital of Kerala, where the G20 Health Working Group meeting is underway. Such a pleasure to have you, Vedya Kotecha Ji, on India at G20. I was going through the Bali Declaration and I could find no mention there of either Yoga or Ayush. So that brings me to the question. Is promotive and preventive health care going to be India's unique contribution as G20 president? Uh, actually, the, you know, this <laughs> Right, where the Kuteja, uh, we will... Uh, you can see that that uh, after this and today immediately in the afternoon uh, on the no we cannot hear you clearly sir maybe we can attempt a reconnection in a bit before that uh, okay uh, yeah right can we uh, attempt to uh, reconnect with uh, secretary okay sir let's let's try okay. this again i was asking you if this is going to be india's unique contribution as g20 president emphasis on promotive and preventive health care Yes, actually, this is the this is the one of the uh, important thing that India is trying to get into the G20. That traditional medicine, wellness, holistic health, one health is is in the on the forefront during these discussions. And uh, as a matter of fact, there is a side event of med medical value travel where Irish industries are uh, participating in a very big manner. And these G20 delegates are visiting the Somatiram. Uh, resort of Ayurveda is, is, a, is a very big resort in Kerala just to showcase the, the Ayurveda tourism, Ayurveda medical value travel, uh, how much is possible in our country. Hmm. 
So what were the impressions that the G20 delegates had? Uh, they were participating in morning yoga session and there was emphasis on medical uh, value travel as well. They had gone to a PM Jan Oshadi uh, Center as well in uh, Tiruvananthapuram. So what are their impressions of how India is taking forward promotive and preventive health care? Uh, it's really, uh, oh, this is really interesting that uh, you may see that a uh, lot, of, lot of delegates has come for the yoga session, they were very enthusiastic and, and they have well received it. They, they stayed for uh, almost more than, a, more than an hour for the yoga session. And then this showcasing of India's health system in integrative care, the, uh, our, our, our vaccine development and our health system per se all over the country and in Kerala, everything was showcased well and they were highly, highly appreciative about India's strength particularly in the area of integrative medicine and Ayush and traditional medicine and their strength and wellness. All those things are appreciated and, and uh, in one health perspective, uh, there is a discussion pending and it is going on. And uh, for the benefit of the viewers, uh, can you tell us about how effective Ayush products and services have been in the fight against COVID-19? What is the evidentiary basis of the way Ayush products were used to combat COVID-19? Actually, uh, you can, uh, through, through this platform, I am happy to share that uh, Ayush Ministry and with the collaboration of lot of institutions like ICMR, DBT, lot of medical colleges, we were able to conduct more than 150 studies. And uh, there were two repurposed medicines and lot of preventive aspects have been identified and then evidence has been generated. So through this, uh, we were, the Ayush ministry and uh, through Ayush modalities were able to help the people in a very big manner. Uh, working with uh, neck to neck uh, with the health ministry, we were able to penetrate through the states and, 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 and uh, states has also contributed a lot. There is a document Nitya has prepared about the integration of Ayush during COVID-19 and it is a wonderful benchmark document. Different states have contributed a lot into the Ayush intervention and people are very prepared through these interventions and we all know that Ayush has, Ayush has uh, you know, helped in COVID crisis in a very big manner. Right, and we are aware that the WHO and India are together uh, setting up a global center for traditional medicine in Jamnagar, yes. Gujarat. It's the first ever such center and India has been yes. chosen for that given the kind of uh, reputation that India has yes. as some a country that has been practicing traditional medicine for millennia. Are yes. G20 know, nations on board on uh, something like this as well? Actually, I want to add one very important information that I want to share is that uh, as, a, as a parallel event in August, when health ministers for this health break are coming from all G20 countries and participating countries uh, in Gandhi Nagar, Gujarat, uh, with the help of WHO, WHO uh, Global Center for Traditional Medicine and, and Government of India Ministry of Health, together we are organizing global event of traditional medicine under GCTM. So it will be a parallel event where we are envisaging that all these health ministers will participate and then talk about traditional medicine where WHO Direct General is, Direct General is also, also scheduled to come. So, so we are trying that traditional medicine is discussed at length in these countries and be and implemented in a very big manner uh, into commerce, into research, into practice and, and, and evidence generation and education. Everywhere it is implemented, that is what we are envisaging. Right. We are aware that uh, these uh, health working group meetings, they feed into the ministerial declaration and then they feed into the New Delhi declaration or the G20 yes. country declaration. Yes. Yes. What are the deliverables that we are looking at which uh, should uh, as per India find its way into the ministerial declaration and finally into the New Delhi declaration in terms of Ayush? We are working with the health ministry because they are the nodal ministry. So we have uh, discussed this at length and we are trying that uh, in the, in the health, health, health minister declaration, subsequently the leaders declaration, uh, the, the specific uh, area of traditional medicine like integrative care, forum for traditional medicine and G20, all those things are achieved. Okay. And uh, beyond that, uh, how are you looking at integration with the modern medicine are we also yes, yes. yes are we also looking at traditional medicine of uh, various countries in a collaborative platform so as to 
ensure that benefits of traditional medicine across countries reach a wider cross section of people around the world that is what is the is the purpose that is why uh, government of india is is uh, is helping who to have this event of uh, global event of traditional medicine where we will generate we will we'll generate this ecosystem of generating evidence talking about each other traditional medicine and getting into mainstream in an integrative manner integrative manner means that whatever is good good uh, these traditional medicines should be translated into the public health delivery system which is happening in india and in all lot of other countries for example we have invited one uh, expert from germany for this tomorrow's medical will travel uh, event and she she is representing a very big neurology hospital in one of the city of germany where they are doing integrative care for the neurological patients like parkinson's and multiple sclerosis and all those neurology degenerative disorder they are using ayurveda yoga and and modern medicine together to help the people uh, the patient so that type of medication is happening in other countries also so what we are trying to do is that under this platform under the g20 presidency these evidences these practices are translated at a very large scale into into these countries and if, and their people are benefited at large right and uh, we heard uh, from the health minister ahead of uh, the health working group meeting that india will soon be launching a heal in india initiative and there's so much uh, focus today on uh, medical value travel and tourism as well so is there going to be synergy between the two there is a lot of synergy you, uh, you may you may i i want to cite this example that is in the honorable minister of state bharti bharti ben have launched this uh, uh, medical travel side event there is a big showcase of both these industry together like big hospital chains that they are there in this they showcase in an expo and then ayush industries also there they are neck to neck they are working together and there is a good showcase of this side energy uh, of uh, thoughts and, and and practices into this medical travel travel event at g20 presidency under the health tech and there is also focus on value based health care what is india's yes. vision for it uh, as g20 president actually value based health value based health care is is very important component the uh, india's uh, in, in india's argument or india's uh, you know uh, message or says saying is that we should all work together as a one health and one family and for the benefit of the people if we offer if we can offer some affordable solution to the patients who have to wait a lot in different countries for small small procedures or surgeries or small medical things you know we should create an ecosystem under this presidency or in all these countries that that patients gets benefited and they have they get affordable solution for their care and then through this we we want to achieve universal health coverage hmm. this is wonderful modality that we work together and achieve this right towards the end i want to ask you that uh, india has a vision for preventive and promotive health care to achieve universal health coverage but are the other g20 countries on board also what is the view of the low and middle income countries as india wants to promote the voice of the global south at g20 are they all on board is there broadly consensus on what india has envisioned no no it is too early because this this is the discussion has just started yesterday this is first meeting there are such four meetings are being visualized before the health minister's declaration coming so it is too early for me to comment on it i do, uh, i think you know i i not authorized to speak in on behalf of other countries right. but i'm sure that there is a lot of curiosity and consensus is building and you will, we will see when this uh, health rec, uh, health minister's declarations come in for the for the leaders declaration input and i'm sure that it will come as a consensus So positive signals so far. Thank yes. you so much, Mr. Uh, yes. Rajesh Katocha, for joining us uh, from Tiruvannamalai and for sharing your perspective on the day two of the Health Working Group meeting of G20 in Tiruvannamalai. The spotlight on the second day of the G20 Health Working Group meeting in Tiruvannamalai was on yoga, digital health, and medical value tourism. Here's a snapshot of how the day went by. The day 2 of G20 delegates in Tiruvannamalai started with a relaxing yoga session. G20 delegates performed yoga by the scenic Kovalam beach. 
Under India's G20 presidency, a key focus area is promoting holistic health, an amalgamation of traditional systems of medicine in healthcare service delivery. I enjoyed it very much, even I'm not so flexible, so it was relaxing but also demanding. I really enjoyed the experience of yoga, I haven't done it for a long, long time. It was such a relaxing way to start the morning, uh, beautiful and just really well paced. And I love that it was both the yoga and the breathing, so ready for another long day of meetings now. The morning yoga session was followed by deliberations on how digital health innovations and solutions can aid universal health coverage and improve healthcare service delivery. The delegates underscored the need for a robust strategy that integrates financial, organizational, human and technological resources to guide national or regional digital health initiatives. India is an incredible country in terms of manufacturing, in terms of uh, digital health, uh, in terms of uh, technology. I think this is an opportunity for Commonwealth and with India's leadership to progress on multiple fronts on innovation and technology to solve today's problems, to help us achieve sustainable and inclusive development. A side event on medical value travel was inaugurated by Union Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare, Dr. Bharti Praveen Pawar. We also have something unique in India, our culture of traditional medicines like Ayurveda and Yunani. This gets us to an important content of preventive and promotive aspect of healthcare besides curative health services. India envisions to accelerate the efforts towards health system transformation, increasing the pace of implementation of value-based healthcare and achieving the goal of universal health coverage across the world. With the G20 Indian Presidency, the multilateral collaborations between the countries facilitated by knowledge sharing leading to formulation of effective policies aiding accessible, affordable and quality healthcare to citizens across the world. The event featured panel discussions on holistic well-being through integrated healthcare, building resilient and sustainable medical travel and strengthening such travel through partnerships. G20 delegates toured KIMS Health Hospital as part of medical value travel with inputs from Aisha Khanam and Nitendra Singh from Tiruvananthapuram, Bureau Report, DD India. The delegates also got an opportunity to experience Kerala's art and culture at an art and crafts village. Speaking to DD India, Dr. Alain Elabrik, Director of Digital Health and Innovation at WHO said that India has shown that foundational investments can enable transformation into technologically mature systems of which Aadhaar is an example. He called for a global shift from a pilot or project approach to an ecosystem framework to build a solid foundation for global health systems digitally. Listen in. India five years ago is very different to India today and the same can be said for countries across the globe in the right. global south and so we have to think about where we are today but also build solutions for tomorrow right. and keep in mind that everyone should benefit from this technology revolution so success is built on trust and trust means that there is a background of policy of legislation that protects the privacy and security and builds the trust of individuals to use these systems. So I think that's the foundational place where I would like to see India shining as a beacon to other countries to learn from. What are those elements of legislation and policy that need to be in place for digital success to be possible? DD India correspondent Aisha Khanam also spoke to former chief scientist of WHO Soumya Swaminathan on the lessons that the world must learn from the COVID-19 pandemic in order to build a robust and fairer global health architecture. Listen in. So how do you, uh, you know, analyze this entire health infrastructure, health structure across the globe? Globally, we saw that, uh, you know, the investments in primary health care and public health were very important. The second lesson I think is the importance of investing in science and research 
and development for countries because we saw that countries which had a strong base, they actually did much better. I think the third lesson was that um, the global connections, collaborations and working together which is very nicely encapsulated by India's theme for the G20 which is Vasudhaiva Kudumpukam. Change uh, is also being talked about that is digital health, uh, uh, strengthening the health infrastructure digitally. Technology is going to play a very important role but we cannot let technology dominate us. We have to be in control. The government particularly needs to really have a very strong governance and stewardship which is exactly what India has done in terms of establishing the India stack and establishing the national digital health mission and blueprint. Lead India correspondent Aisha Khanam spoke to Dr. Y.K. Gupta, an expert on antimicrobial resistance, a key imponderable under the health track. Listen in. So much of concern that there is no antibiotic left which is effective. And the cause is A, misuse or overuse of antibiotics. B, the non-availability of effective antibiotic against those organisms which have become resistant. C, because this is a concern not only for human being but for the animal, for the environment as well. Therefore, there are few important things which are concerns. A, is the creating an awareness among the physician, public and the industry as well and the diagnostic that what is the relevance of rational prescription or rational medication avoid the antimicrobial agents where it is not required give the antimicrobial agent with justification where it is required in right dose for right duration the india correspondent aisha khanam also spoke to healthcare personnel manning a medical room equipped with first aid for the g20 delegates at the venue of the first health working group meeting in tiruvananthapuram take a listen Basically a first aid unit right. and whatever uh, things come under the umbrella of first aid we can manage here and we have all medicines, our setups. Both of us are monitoring the uh, team. Uh, there are five doctors, then uh, three nursing staff and three nursing assistants are there. Nobody is symptomatic. Nobody has yet come for screening for COVID. And we now leave you with a cultural extravaganza that depicted traditional dance forms and art of Kerala and left G20 delegates in thrall in Thiruvananthapuram. Thanks for watching. Namaskar. On our Republic Day, as India comes together in all its beauty, diversity and strength to celebrate with pride, joy and reverence. Come, join us for the live telecast as the tricolor flutters in our hearts, homes and hopes on the 26th of January only on Doordarshan. जल्दी पैसे डबल ओ जमा करोगे 
तो फिर भुगतोगे क्या लो ऐसे लुभाने वाली स्कीम में पैसे जमा करना यानी धोखे की संभावना इसलिए पहले पूरी जांच उसके बाद पैसे जमा नहीं तो आपके पैसे हो जाएंगे अरबिया कहता है जानकार बनिए सतर्क रहिए छिपा है ये पुरखों की कृपा है ये दिखलाएगा रास्ता दुनिया में प्रसिद्ध जो अपने आप सिद्ध जो रखना इस पे आस था योगा रंभ हो योगा रंभ हो योगा रंभ हो योगा रंभ हो विश्व को भेंट दी हमने योग है योगा रंभ हो भारत ने ही योग सिखाया जग में फैलाया विश्व ने अपनाया नियंत्रण आया रोग पे विश्व ने जैसे है पाया जो अधिकार ये अब आरोग्य पे है सब हो पाया योग से सदियों से रहा है ये सब ही में कहा है ये योगा रंभ हो योगा रंभ हो ये शरीर और मन का संजोग है योगा रंभ हो योगा रंभ हो जो सुझा दे जीवन को वो योग है जो सुझा दे जीवन को वो
we have fast rising squash player Anaha Singh with us. Congratulations on winning uh, under 15 British Open. First, tell me how big is this for you? It's one of the biggest international tournaments in the whole world with players from all over the country and play different levels. And I'm really excited to have just gotten the opportunity to play a part of the event. Share with us in detail how was that experience of uh, competing in Commonwealth Games? Like Commonwealth, it's the biggest tournament you can play because squash is not in the Olympics. So it's somewhat it's something every squash player dreams of and mm. like that i got to do it at 14 and at such a young age um i couldn't believe it until i was actually there Hello and welcome to the latest edition of India Ideas, the weekly show which is all about science and tech, innovation and entrepreneurship. I'm Gautam Roy. Today we're profiling a sector among Indian startups which holds a lot of promise for keeping India's flag flying higher internationally and giving it a lot of economic and strategic advantage in the days to come. It's a sector which has recently been opened up by the government to private players and has had a bumper year compared to all the years earlier in 2022. You've guessed it right. It's Space Tech. The space tech sector in India has seen a sea change since the government opened it up to participation by the private sector in 2020. It also launched in space, which was meant for promoting, hand-holding and authorizing space activities by private players. 111 space tech startups are registered on the in-space digital platform so far. Space tech uh, funding jumped 61.5% in 2022. It went from 108.52 plus million dollars in 2022 compared to 67.2 million dollars in 2021. Now, of the 245.35 million dollars received by the sector in the last seven years, 198.22 plus million dollars has come post 2020. 2022 saw Indian space tech startup Skyroot Aerospace launch India's first private sector rocket successfully, putting a suborbital satellite in space. And it also saw another Indian space tech startup Agnikul Cosmos inaugurating India's first private launch pad and mission control center at the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Triharikota. But there are more milestones and successes in store. Let's dive into space tech emerging startup ecosystem star with our guests and they are Anuj Sharma, co-founder Earth Analytics, which is focusing on measuring nature with remote sensing with geospatial and satellite data to come up with a remote sensing based algorithm to measure soil, to measure regenerative agriculture and to see how to catalyze conservation finance in it. We also have Srinath Ravichandran, founder and CEO of Agni Cool Cosmos, which is a very cool company which is democratizing access to space by designing, manufacturing, testing and launching orbital class rockets for microsatellites and nanosatellites. It has many feathers in its cap, including being the first space tech company in the world really to 3D print an entire rocket engine in a single piece, reducing the rocket's cost, complexity and assembly time from 12 weeks to less than 48 hours. And under a the money is also with us, managing partner Earth Venture Fund, which has investments in 100 plus startups across India, the US, Israel, Africa, and the UK, including in Agni Cool Cosmos. Welcome to you all. Anush, let me start with you. Tell us a little bit more about Earth Analytics that, uh, you know, than I said in my intro, really, and where exactly does it fit in to the space tech startup ecosystem? Thanks a lot for uh, uh, inviting us here. So very excited to uh, be part of it. So we are primarily incubated by IIT Kanpur, and uh, we have a cutting edge technology where we are using satellites to measure soil carbon. Uh, that's one very important initiative. So what we are doing is, if you look around, uh, the space tech is involved in a big way. And there has also been a very amazing uh, e uh, evolution. This whole uh, sector is that we can do lots of data analytics and lots of, uh, I will say, inside, uh, uh, like uh, you can you can measure 